The chair calls Willa Bluestone, representing Ohio Life Services, to provide testimony. <laughs> Who? <clears throat> Welcome, Willa. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Chairwoman Carruthers, Ranking Member Liston, members of the uh, Health and Human Services Subcommittee, thank you so much for the opportunity to testify today. Very excited to be here. It is my first time testifying, so if we could hold the questions, that'd be great. Really go easy. Some softballs would be good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready for it, I'm ready. Uh, yeah, as, as the chairwoman said, my name is Willa Bluestone. I serve as the director of policy and workforce strategies at Ohio Life Sciences. We are the state's trade association for everything from uh, pharmaceutical research, medical tech, uh, medical devices, gene and cell therapies, anything and everything in between. So uh, our members are varying wide across the state, about 300 members in total. Um, and they are really on the cutting edge of medical intervention and innovation. Uh, so, with that, as many of you know, um, and are very interested in, it seems, uh, Duchenne muscular dystrophy. So the Department of Health oversees a program to identify newborn babies who are at a uh, heightened risk of developing medical conditions that significantly impact their lifespan or quality of life. <clears throat> so currently, Ohio law requires that all newborns are screened within about the first five or so days of their birth. Um, and that, that screening panel only requires about five drops of blood taken from the heel and tests for about 40 separate medical conditions. Um, typically and very thankfully, a lot of those test results come back normal. Um, unfortunately, some babies and families are not as lucky. <clears throat> um, of about the 3,000 or so individuals who receive abnormal results which require further diagnostic testing, about 10% of those will uh, soon be diagnosed uh, with, with a, a diagnosis that requires se severe medical intervention. Um, however, with such early diagnostics uh, and testing, uh, serious health conditions, including death, uh, can sometimes be avoided. So uh, you have before you, I believe, uh, HC0021, which would add Duchenne muscular dystrophy to the newborn screening panel. Uh, now, Duchenne muscular dystrophy, or DMD, uh, this is a form of muscular dystrophy that develops much more rapidly than other forms of muscular dystrophy. Um, it commonly affects males. About 1 in 3,600 males um, are diagnosed with it, making it one of the most common fatal genetic disorders. Uh, some staggering statistics for you. The average age of diagnosis, as you heard earlier, is about 5 years old. That means, on average, a child diagnosed with Duchenne has already suffered through five years' worth of muscular degeneration before the doctors are even able to identify the cause. The muscles are not stagnating at this point. They're not even developing at a slightly lower or slower than normal rate. They are actively atrophying, active atrophy. And I know that that sounds odd, but I want it to because I want it to stick. Active atrophy. So as a result, children are faced with irreversible muscle damage um, before they start the first grade. Now, Chairwoman Carruthers, I don't know about you. <clears throat> when I was starting the, fifth, the first grade, excuse me, uh, I had a borderline obsession with the Wiggles. Um, let's see, I watched black and white TV because I thought that's what my dog would like to watch because it was already in black and white for him. <laughs> um, let's see, I was constantly getting into trouble and as any good baby sister would do, I blamed it on my older brothers. Um, which I really think uh, built some character for them. Uh, and my parents were constantly worried. They had three fairly healthy children, one a little bit of a chaotic troublemaker, but fairly, you know, concerned in general. Yeah, it was all right. We made it through together. Um, I cannot even begin to imagine the stress and worry of a parent who spends five years not knowing what is happening to their child or their body. And then finally discovering that there's a condition that has been silently destroying that child's muscles for five years, and they've not been able to do anything about it. So um, as, as I think is really worth noting, uh, and is, is probably expected, uh, children uh, that come from families of color uh, and from the lower end of the socioeconomic scale experience far greater delays when it comes to diagnosis. Um, but by adding DMD, Duchenne muscular dystrophy, to the screening panel, we can decrease the number of tests um, that are unnecessarily costly 
really painful for the patients as well. We decrease the amount of time that parents are going to spend worrying about their child, um, but we systematically increase the ability for families to make proactive decisions that improve the quality of life for their children and the family as a whole. Now, I wanted to end really quickly, if I have time, I know I'm on a time limit here, um, with a quote from the Department of Health website. So it says, and I quote, the overall goal of NBS, the newborn screening panel, is to improve the quality of life for babies through early diagnosis and treatment. Time is a very important element in this process. Cooperation and timely action by parents and medical providers will help all the babies get a healthy start at life, end quote. So clearly, adding Duchenne muscular dystrophy to the newborn screening panel achieves that goal, achieves that vision. Uh, Ohio Life Sciences is a proud supporter of this amendment and happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you, and full disclosure, <clears throat> you did a great job. Thank you. Full disclosure, um, we've all known Willa for quite a while, as you can tell. She was Rep Lips aide, and I can't remember if you, you've been around a little bit. Yeah, I worked for Gary Shearer and Cheryl Yeah, Brosnan. so um, she, she knows the process quite well, needless to say, and she was great aide, by the way. Um, I worked with her quite a bit <laughs> in health, and um, you did a great job. Thank Willa. you. I Does appreciate it. Rep. Schmidt has a question. Oh, fantastic. I just have a comment. Yes, ma'am. Sometimes you save the best till the end. I think and so. And you clearly outlined the need succinctly for us to screen infants for this disease. Thank you. Through the chair to Representative Schmidt, I appreciate that. Um, I think my parents would say the best as well. They definitely saved the, le the best for last. So, you know, happy to be here, and uh, I appreciate it. Any, uh, yeah, Rep, Rep Liston has. All right. Uh, thank you, Chiron. And uh, I have the hard question. I do, actually, because you're okay. the life sciences group. Right. So uh, sensitivity and specificity of the, the screening test at this point. Are you, do you, can you share with that? Do you know what that is? For sensitivity, excuse me, through the chair to the representative, uh, to the ranking member. Uh, sensitivity in what sense? Um, so... So the question is, of the positive tests, mm -hmm. um, specificities of the positive tests, how many of them are true positives representing disease? Sensitivity is of the, those with disease, what is the likelihood of picking it up? Right? Completely like, understood, yes. Uh, through the chair to the ranking member, uh, I don't have that information on me at this point, don't know it off the top of my head. Certainly uh, don't want to mischaracterize that in any sense, so happy to follow up through the chair's office with that info. Um, and anything else that you, you would need with that. Sounds good. See, great hard question, but thank you. Important for screening, right? Nice. See, you yes. rocked it. Thank you. Thank you, Willa. Good to thank see you. you. Keep in touch. Yes, ma'am. <laughs>